For as long as we have known, we have lived inside a box. Surrounded by dirt, we have done our very best to survive. We have peed on volcanoes, cuddled with puffs. We have struggled to survive, digging as far as we dare. The one question we have always wondered is what lies beyond the Neutronium. But now we have a new hope. A heavens above has revealed itself to the inky blackness of space. Welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to Oxygen Not Included. And this is the preview of the Cosmic Upgrade. And I think this is a pretty cool update to the game because it brings in outer space to the game. So that is all up here, and that actually includes quite a few things. So look at this. We also got this planet back here. Is this our home? Is this not our home? Is that where we're trying to go? There's something definitely happened there, and I think it has something to do with why we're here. The other thing that is also happening here is we've got solar light, and there's also different resources up here. We've got mafic rock. What in the world is that? Interesting. It's a rock. We also got some other stuff here that we don't quite have a name for just yet. However, this material here is a filtration medium, so hmm, that might be quite interesting. All right, so just to take you through one of the coolest new pieces of equipment that we have available to us in the game, that is solar panels. You can take a look at it right here as Rowan is kind of demonstrating to us what a solar panel is inside of oxygen not included. So this solar panel right here is made of glass, which is another important thing. And we can see here we've got windows and everything. But what this is, is a new generator for our, our plant. So we've got solar panels. This thing can, you know, these numbers, again, it's a preview to the update. So numbers might change. But we can see right here, it in its current form is 220 watts and it does produce heat at plus 45 watts right there. So you can see that this is kind of something interesting is going on here, right? We've got a solar panel and then we've got a glass window tile. How do we make glass? Well, we've known that if we heat up sand in like debug mode or just kind of throw it on top of some lava, if it gets hot enough, it'll actually make glass. Well, now we can make glass tiles. So if we take a look at some of the new tiles we have down here, there is window tiles and they can be make that out of diamond or glass. Ooh, that's pretty fancy. Now, why in the world would you want to make something out of diamond or glass? Well, there is a new feature to the game, which is solar light. So depending on this, you know, the cycle and the time of day, there's going to be a certain amount of solar light that's actually coming from space and the stars beyond into our base. And we can see that I've got some interesting doors that are open up here. These are actually bunker doors. So they are a giant mechanized airlock, more or less. And they do take a little bit more power and they are relatively slow. Some updates to the mechanized airlock have happened here as far as their opening and closing speed. Uh, because, you know, as we've used them previously to kind of do like air pumps and stuff like that, they will now operate quite a bit slower if they are not powered. So that's what's going on here. So let's just take a quick look at one example of that thing going on here. So we've got one and we've got another. And I'm going to say to this one, open. And you can see how that opened kind of slow. That was actually fast. Um, so let me close that one again. You can see how slow that door is operating. However, if we power this door up, check it out, watch what happens. If I click open, normal speed, whoop, opens quite a bit faster. So let's go ahead and just do a race here. That one is going to go to open and that one's going to go to open. One's powered and one's not powered. Big, big difference. So we have a reason to power our mechanized airlocks now. As you could imagine, our bunker doors operate in more or less the same fashion. Open! Hmm, 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 hmm. It requires an automation signal in order to work, at least at this point in time. So how long does it open with power versus no power? <laughs> it is refusing to cooperate. <laughs> so looking back at the dynamics of solar light, what I can see here is that the bunker doors are open and that's letting light into the base. And as we can see, it's traveling through this window and it's hitting this solar panel. The solar panel below it is not generating any power because it's being blocked by the piece of equipment above it. However, this one down here has got a couple of things going on for it. One, it is being powered by the solar light that is finding its way into the base. And it's also being powered by these crystal shine blood. 
bugs or just shine bugs in general. So you can see the one over here on the right is actually producing 29.4 watts. However, the one on the left is producing 33.25, just a little bit more. Not a lot of light is making its way through and it's kind of the end of the cycle. We can take a look at that later on just to kind of see how that changes. All right, so now that the day has started again, we can see the one over here on the left is actually at 75 watts and increasing, but the one on the right is actually quite a bit lower. It's just working off of shine bugs. So there's a difference. And look at it, it keeps going up 90 watts. Free energy. I love it. I'm really looking forward to actually building up to the point of actually being able to use the solar panels. Speaking of which, I wonder where that is in the research tree. Super computer, go. Taking a look at the research tree. Holy cow, it's getting deep. All right, so window tiles are the highest of, of the decor tree right there. High temperature forging for the glass forge and the bunker tiles and the bunker doors. That's all very, very high. So everything here is like the highest tier stuff. Celestial detection, look at that. Look at all the, man, that's way up there. Renewable energy. Next to the steam turbine, we also get the solar panel. So that's pretty awesome. We get that at the exact same time. Not to glance over the little changes to the critter situation. There was an update as far as the amount of critters that could be delivered to a, a critter drop-off in the stable management system. So maximum 20 right there. And then you can also have auto wrangle excess critters. So you can kind of bunch them up and get them out of there. There's been some changes also to the eggs. They will go bad if you store them for after a while. And then once they go bad, you can't go back and hatch them. You actually have to use like an egg cracker in order to get that out. So that is down there. See that new piece of equipment? Cracks open a critter egg for use as a cooking ingredient. Whoa, look at this. You can select. Okay, this gives you an option to select what you want there. Cool. Cool beans. All right, so I mentioned the glass forge. As you can see right here, we have it extracts pure molten glass from sand. So Rowan is gonna dig down some of the sand that I have right here, and he's gonna throw it inside the forge, and we'll see what happens here. This should be kind of interesting. Where are you going, bro? Huh? Turn around, Rowan. Rowan! Oh, they didn't make the duplicates any smarter. Oh, this one has a liquid output. That's why. Huh. But man, look at the temperature of that! Holy cow! Whoa! That's gonna be really useful. Oh, oh, okay. Molten glass gets piped out of that sucker. Oh, oh, oh hang on. Oh, oh. Let's get rid of this junky liquid pipe. Come on, game, don't, don't be doing this to me. Let's use some insulated liquid pipe with abyssalite, or maybe we can use the new ceramic pipes. That's also new as well. Ah, why is, no. All right, Rowan, operate the glass forge for me. Hmm, you can do it. Come on, buddy, come on. Way to be a team player, Rowan. And what? <laughs> Mystery happens and Hey, there we go. So now it's in the pipe and what we have inside of there. Ooh, ooh, I like this. We have 10 kilograms of molten glass at 1,733 degrees Celsius. Watch this, we're gonna drop it into a cold biome and everything's gonna melt. Ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. It's what? I like it. So what I'm using here is the new insulated liquid pipes. These are the ceramic ones. Although you can make ceramic, you can make ceramic anything just about. I mean, it's like all over the place in this new update. Ceramic floor tiles, you name it. Matter of fact, this right here is an insulated ceramic tile right there. And look at that thermal conductivity, 0 0.006. Very, very insulative. Which almost makes me think abyssalite might become a, quite a bit harder to use. Although, I don't, I don't know, maybe they nerfed it? Let's take a look at abyssalite. Insulated abyssalite and then the mafic rock. Let's take a look at the mafic rock. You can see that's 0 0.01, so that's not too... And <laughs> now, abyssalite is basically zero. So, it's still not quite abyssalite, but we could probably use it for something. 
I think I'll end up using glass. Glass is definitely going to become a heater for something. And then I'll use it to make a bunch of windows. Because that's how a baller rolls. Let's take a look at another piece of equipment here. This is the kiln that has been recently or just added to the game. So if I queue up this, we can refine coal into refined carbon. What in the world happens there? <laughs> well, you punch this kiln thing, apparently. And what in the world does refined carbon get me? No, no. You move over here and drop that. Refined carbon. Refined carbon is dot, dot, dot. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what that's all about. However, with this kiln, we can also refine clay into ceramic, which is, you know, going to be really useful. We can use it all over the place. So let's take a look at the two different window tiles we have available to us. You can make one out of glass and the other out of diamond. We'll take a look at the one made out of diamond. Thermal conductivity of 80. Whew, interesting. And also extremely high temperature. You can see the glass has a fairly high temperature one at 1,400, but that's nowhere near what the diamond was. And its thermal conductivity is actually quite a bit lower. Although that is still kind of suspiciously high, maybe? All right, so I've done ceramics, kilns. Oh, smelter. All right, so that's where refined carbon is used. It's now available inside of the metal refinery. So in order to make steel, we need some iron, we need refined carbon, and we also need lime. Okay, so let's say we were to crack open an egg here. What do we get? Well, I get obviously my omelet, but I also get an eggshell. And it, that can be crushed to make lime. Oh, okay. I bet you we used the other machine. Where is that one? The, the, the smasher one. The rock granulator. Bet you it's right inside of here. Yep. Crush eggshells into lime. Dink. Some of the other notes is varying egg masses per creature type. Mm -hmm. There's also some new artwork for wrangling. So this brings me to the last piece of equipment. So now that we have access to space and the vacuum of space, we want to make sure that we don't end up damaging our base because there are meteor showers that are going to happen inside the game now. So that's what the meteor scanner is for. It actually will scan the sky and looking for incoming meteor showers. And depending on how much of a quality scan you have going on, wherever you place these scanners and whatnot, You'll be able to give yourself a certain amount of time to, you know, lock down your base. So you can see here the automation signal has triggered, right? And these bunker doors are closing up before the next meteor shower happens. And you can see that this meteor shower will try to damage certain things. This tile over here, this simple metal tile, has already taken some damage. And you can see that these doors here, unfortunately, haven't closed down. So meteors are finding its way through this bunker door. Oh no! So this here is a dust comet storm. You can just see how it's just pummeling the surface. And it will potentially damage some of my equipment. I know what you're asking. Can it hurt a duplicate? Well, let's find out. We're just going to have to spawn somebody out there. You can see also that he just got a new debuff on him. An extremely bright light is making this duplicate Happy, but prolonged exposure will result in burning. Whoa, look at that big meteor. Oh, wow, look at this big comet. A rock comet. All right. Liam, hey, catch a comet for me, bro. Oh, man, that did hurt him. That took away 20 health of Liam right there, which actually isn't as bad as I thought it'd be. I mean, that was a pretty big comet. Here, catch another, bruh. Ooh! All right, so let's see this animation. Wham! Oh, well, he just got knocked over. That was disappointing. Let's try that again. Let's find a bigger... Oh, there we go. Look at this mother. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Liam. Wham! So he's got meteorite wounds. Huh, that's cool. Hang on, catch another one, bruh. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. Thanks for the good work, Liam. 
Uh, how about you jump on a manual generator now and help provide some power for the space base? All right, guys. Well, I think that just about covers all of the new little features here in the cosmic upgrade for oxygen not included. I'm really looking forward to this, and I'm really looking forward to trying to play around with some of this stuff here in my next challenge, which is going to be a ultimate automation challenge as voted by you guys down there in the comment section below. So now that I got this, I'm going to start into it. And we're going to see just how awesome of a space base we can make. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Let me know what you're looking forward to. And if you've got some ideas for potentially automating some of this new equipment. I'm looking forward to seeing what all we can do with it. And hopefully you guys are too. Thanks for watching, guys. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. And if you have been a subscriber to this channel for a little while, you may want to check to see if you're actually still subscribed. I've seen some really weird things going on with my YouTube channel here recently, so you might just want to double check that. At any rate, guys, stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.